Microsoft continues to add accessibility into Windows. Today, we are going to be looking at 2,627 new accessibility features you might not be aware of. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Hi all, welcome back to another Tech Connect. We are looking at three accessibility features in Microsoft that you might not be aware of. Luke, you are our shepherd for today, leading the flock through the treacherous world of accessibility. Are you ready to lead us? Absolutely not. Do you? Okay. Do you have the things that I told you to bring today's video? Do you have the staff that's correctly called what? Crook. Very good. Did you bring yours? No, I'm, I'm saying you're a crook. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I did steal your crook. <laughs> All right, you're ready to lead us on this adventure looking at three accessibility features in Microsoft that you might not be aware of. Never been readier. Corey. Yes. What's Bill Gates' favorite thing to look through? Uh, doors. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, of course, Windows. And today we are looking at three accessibility features in Windows that you may not know about. And if you check out in the top right, you will see a card that uh, will take you to the, our video on the regular accessibility features in Windows, as long as Jonathan remembers to put it up there. So if he doesn't, please put in the comments, Jonathan did not put up the card. Yes. And we will make sure to, uh, to tell him off about you that. You can email him at jonathan at producer.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to Let's see who that actually goes Sorry to. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, anyway, so these are three lesser known accessibility features, and uh, they're not going to take very long to run through, so stay tuned. The first one we're going to look at is Nightlight. Corey, any idea what Nightlight does? Um, when you turn on this feature, yeah. a knight yeah. rides into your room right. on a horse yeah. with, with a light, with chain a mail on, okay. and he says, I see the light. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. That would be pretty awesome. But All no, right, sadly, maybe you can tell us the truth. Yes, I will tell you the truth. Nightlight is a is a blue light blocker. Okay. Now the idea is that at night you don't want too much blue light because it keeps you awake. Yeah. However, I find personally that using a computer all day, if I if I have too much blue light, it makes my eyes very fatigued, even though it's not nighttime, sure. even in the daytime. So I like nightlight all the time. I'm just one of those kind of people. Let's check it out. I'm gonna open Microsoft Word here. Corey, what color is Microsoft Word Word's page? By default, it should be a pretty bright white. I was trying to trip you up there because I was just gonna hope you were gonna say white and then I was gonna say, aha, but not necessarily. <laughs> However, you did put by default, yes. so very good. That's why you're on assistive technology specialist. Thank you. And uh, what we're going to do here, so it's quite bright and white as Corey had identified because I do have the default color scheme on. I find this really fatiguing for a whole day worth of compute use. However, night light will come to the rescue. I'm going to hit the Windows key. We're going to type in the word night. I'm going to press enter and hey presto, we are into our night light settings. Now that there are a few things that we can do here. We can choose the intensity of the night light. We can also schedule it to come on at a particular time or we can just go ahead and turn it on. And that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna find the button that says turn on now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button. Now my slider is all the way to the right at the moment. And that means that now my page, instead of being that bright white is a lot more yellow. That's the effect that you'll get as you crank up the nightlight. Let's go ahead and slide the slider down here. And this is regular. I'm gonna slide the slider to the right. And it's gone, it's got actually gone into the pinks and the reds at the top end there. Now that was something a little bit strange because the slider visually was yeah. showing me I was all the way to the right. In reality, I wasn't. When I started to move that slider, it actually started to change things more. So we can, uh, all the way to the right is probably a little bit intense. I tend to like it somewhere around, let's say 60 or so. And that makes the Pi page a nice relaxing yellow. From a color contrast mode uh, point for people yeah. with low vision, yeah. turning that from a bright white to a yellow Yellow. Yeah. How do you think that affects the contrast, so let's say, from the black font? Is it still decent enough contrast that it doesn't uh, make it question. harder to read? Yeah, it's going to depend on the individual. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm not vision impaired, so uh, I can't really speak to it. No, but, but I won't ask you anymore. Though. Yeah, so just uh, <laughs> let's not even talk about it. So, uh, but uh, no, I would definitely say try it out if your eyes get fatigued when you're using a computer over a long day. You also have color inversion that you can do as well, obviously, but this is something a little bit different. Sure. So why not try it out? It's right in the in Windows. And we're back for number two. Number two, number two. What will we do? Corey, what is number two? <laughs> 
Move on, please. <laughs> okay, that wasn't where I was going with this. Number two, we are going to be looking at enlarging desktop icons. Corey, what's an icon? An icon is the found on your desktop. It yes. can be a shortcut to a program or okay. a file or a location on your computer. That's weird. I don't see any. Usually, here. it's re on my desktop. Usually, it's re <laughs> usually it's represented by some text and a picture. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> wow. You should go work for Microsoft. That's my Webster dictionary voice. <laughs> now, people don't realize a lot of the time that you can enlarge icons uh, independent of enlarging anything else. It's a little secret trick that I picked up a long time ago when I, I was in Tibet. Uh, and uh, basically, what we have to do is we're going to highlight the icons and we are going to enlarge them. Now, as far as I can find out, you cannot just do this using the keyboard. If I'm wrong, please put it in the comments because I'd love to know if there is a way to do this other than uh, with a mouse. And I also haven't found out a way to do it with a laptop's uh, trackpad either. I have only ever found a way to do it with your regular mouse because we need a scroll wheel. I was just going to say it, not even a regular mouse, although almost every single of my mouses, mouse my, mice's, mice's yeah. have uh, scroll wheels nowadays but you gotta yeah. make sure you have a scroll wheel. You gotta have a scroll wheel. So uh, what we do, we're gonna go ahead and uh, highlight all of the uh, desktop icons here. Okay. Assuming that you want them all large, you know? No, um, I would, yes, yes. I would. Like yeah. Okay, all. well, good, good. And then we're gonna hold down control on the keyboard and we're gonna scroll the mouse wheel up. And as we scroll, they're getting larger and larger and larger. Now, a couple of things that I've tried before, mm -hmm. control plus. Doesn't work. Okay. Well, that yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, control and then a, a pinch and reverse pinch on the trackpad. No good. Does not work. Got it. Control sliding two fingers up and down on the trackpad, which is usually a scroll method. Does not work. Okay. Yeah. So none of those methods work. The only way I found to do it is control and the scroll wheel on your mouse. And does that uh, stick then if you reboot sure and it does. keeps it? Sticky. As sticky as a stick. That's pretty sticky. <laughs> stick around for number three. <laughs> All right, well, number three is here already, and now we're gonna dive into the browser. Corey, what's your favorite browser? My favorite browser yeah. is... Yeah. Well, half an evening. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. The answer to what my favorite browser is, is Microsoft Edge. I was it has... taught never to lie. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> I don't have a problem with that, I'm just kidding. No. Go. So uh, Edge is built into Windows. It has text-to-speech built right in. We have looked before in our previous video that Jonathan will hopefully put a card up for here again. Uh, we have again, it's at... Jonathan at producer.com <laughs> if he forgets. Uh, we have looked at uh, the text-to-speech built into the magnifier, but using Microsoft Edge, we don't even even need to use the magnifier to have the contents of web pages read aloud to us. And here is how it works, Corey. First of all, we, micro we open Microsoft Edge, we wait for the page to load, and the next thing we're going to do is navigate to our preferred page. I'm going to okay. go to bbc.com and we're going to find out what news stories they have. Now, reading news stories, as well as being depressing, can also uh, be quite yeah. timing on the eyes. Sure. However, the browser can read them to us. So we're going to go ahead and open up a story here, and here it is on the screen. We have lots of words. What do we do next, Corey? Well, next, we go up to the address and search bar, and to the right, we are going to find an icon. It is an A with a few uh, kind of lines coming off the side of it. Okay. This is our text-to-speech uh, capability here. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is click it. U.S. House paralyzed as Scalise scrambles and here for it goes. 50 minutes ago. Watch, five things to know about Steve Scalise. By Baron de Busman Jr. And I'll go ahead and pause it. Now, question. Yes. Um, I was half paying attention, okay. so maybe we could review That's more real than quick. usual. <laughs> I know. Um, did you did you select the text you wanted to read, nope. or you just how did it know then where did you put your cursor at where you wanted it to begin? Nope. Okay, so what's the magic then? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it seems to intelligently start reading from where you would want it to. Sure. Like in this example, for example. Other times, not so much. However, never fear, because once you have got it reading, then you can start clicking around, and wherever you click, it's going to move its focus okay. to that area. So let's just do that. I'm going to hit play here. Junior and Anthony Zercher. Scroll down the story. BB. Our Republicans have insisted they will not vote for Mr. Scalise including New York's George... And that time, I skipped down the story by yeah. clicking on a particular okay. paragraph. Now, I assume that there are settings to adjust both the voice and the speech rate and things like that? Yeah, there's a ton of different voices to choose from, all sorts of different languages. Uh, you can adjust the speech rate. And what happens when you hit that A up at the right of the address and search bar is you will see this new menu appear just underneath the address and search bar in your browser. Okay. In that menu will be a play button, will be a go back button, a go forward button, and a 
a voice options button from where we can go ahead and change the speed of the voice and also we can choose a different voice. Corey, let's try a different voice. We are currently listening to Microsoft Michelle online and I feel like a bit of Microsoft Aria online. What do you oh, think? Sure. Okay, well, here okay. we go. Thank goodness they're both online right now. <laughs> let's see what Aria sounds like. Thursday, as Mr. Scalise and his supporters feverishly sought to sway the people that remained in opposition. She sounds like a lovely young lady, Corey. Yeah, I like it. That's pretty cool. Uh, is it highlighting the text at all as it's reading, it or it's just is. straight reading? It's only, this yeah. is this is Bill Gates. All right. <laughs> He knows I'm not sure doing. that Bill Gates had anything to do with this, but we can still give him a little bit of credit. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, no, it highlights and uh, the voices, Corey, some of the best text-to-speech voices that I'm aware of. Absolutely fantastic sound. Yeah, I'm assuming, and now I'm going to make an assumption, but mm. these are probably the nat the new Windows natural voices. I if believe you that launch, would be correct. Um, Narrator yes. in Windows 11. Now you'll get a little thing saying, do you want to download the new voices? I'm guessing that these are probably some of those. I would suspect so. Now, uh, Corey, I'm going to say something very stupid. All and right. you can tell me why it's stupid. Just rewind, everybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you, Corey. Yeah. I'm in order to use this, mm -hmm. your computer has to be connected to the internet. Now, why is that a stupid thing to say, Corey? Well, because you are uh, in Edge yeah. on a web page <laughs> in order to get this to work. Exactly. So I can see where you're coming from, but Indeed. I do think it's important to, to lay that out yeah. because you might have a favorite that's cached already that you mm. go to the website, even though I you're never offline. carry cash these days. So me just me neither. Mm -hmm. I, I know what you mean. But, <laughs> but yes, obviously, you do need to be online to show the web page and be online for this to work correctly. That you makes got sense. it. Well, that was three accessibility options in Microsoft Windows that you might not have been aware of. Were you aware of those? If so, stick it in the comments. Weren't you aware of those? If so, stick it in the comments. What did you have for breakfast today? Stick it in the comments. Why not? We love reading them all. I was now, I'll be honest, I was unaware of two of those features. No, no. Um, I was aware of Nightlight and, yes. and knew what it did. Yes. I did not know that you could adjust the, the icon size. That's mm. pretty cool independently. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was not aware of the new reading feature mm. in so I thank you. I thank yes. you for being the trainer that you are, mm -hmm. training everyone watching, mm -hmm. and even training me. Uh, but yeah, I think they're, they're all useful little features. Uh, obviously, you've got to combine those with the other accessibility things from the video, which Jonathan will have put cards up for, because I have full faith in the man. Again, uh, Jonathan at producer.com. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope people are emailing that, <laughs> that email address feverishly. But uh, yeah, some little things, try them out. Why not? Go ahead and take a look at some of the other videos that we have pulled up in this uh, video today of those cards, but we have a lot of other content around Windows accessibility and Mac accessibility and all kinds of stuff. Go ahead and check out all the videos on our channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and we appreciate it. You can check out our live show on Thursdays. Our next one is October 26, 2023. We will be doing a live session on the InVision AI glasses, 11 a.m. Head to our YouTube channel where you are right now and you'll be able to connect with us live. We also have a learning management system where you can come and get ACVREP credits on demand or if you don't need those and just want to fill your brain with good knowledge, techconnect.vision-forward.org is the place where you can go. You can also shoot us an email if you have any questions, techconnect at vision-forward.org. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.